Hi, my name is Payman and I'm a preventive and social medicine specialist and a professor at Tehran University of Medical Sciences. In this channel, I wanna summarize a recently published paper from the Lancet journals. And for today, you know that October 16th is the World Day of Anesthesiologists. So I selected a specific paper called The Birth of Intensive Care Units. It was published in October edition of the Lancet Infectious Diseases. Of course, it's not publicly accessible and you should purchase it. However, I got it and I wanna explain it. At the beginning, the author refers to a recently published book entitled The Autumn Ghost, How the Battle Against a Polio Epidemic Revolutionized Modern Medical Care. The name of the author is Hannah Wansch, who was a critical care medicine specialist at Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto, Canada during COVID-19 pandemic. You know that those days ICUs and ventilators were top news due to complications of COVID-19 disease. Until 70 years ago, physicians were not able to treat and to do much for patients with respiratory failure. In this book, the author explains how a polio epidemic in Copenhagen, Denmark caused some medical achievements in 1952. Polio mostly affects children. I'm going to emphasize about mostly because it can rarely cause the disease among other age groups. For example, Franklin Roosevelt, who was one of the most famous presidents in the U.S., got the disease in adulthood. Polio is often mild and sometimes it can cause limb paralysis, difficult breathing, and even death. Drinker and Shaw created iron lung in 1928. This machine was a negative pressure respirator to prevent death due to respiratory failure. However, you know that it had many limitations and problems. The first polio case of the epidemic happened in Copenhagen in March 1952. It spread quickly as a result all of the beds of Black Dam Hospital, which was the only infectious disease hospital in Copenhagen, were occupied by polio cases. And in the epidemic, the disease had high frequency of paralysis, swelling problems, and chokings. In those years, polio vaccine was under construction and it was not ready. And most physicians believed that polio deaths were because of brain infection. Dr. Harry Glassen, who was chief physician at the Blakedown Hospital, asked Dr. Bjorn Ibsen, who was an anesthesiologist, to help him. Ibsen found that respiratory symptoms of polio patients were similar to those patients who were ventilated in operating rooms. And he concluded that the cause of death in the polio patients was respiratory failure. Ibsen designed a new idea. He provided tracheostomy to open the patient's airways and then he created a new ventilator machine to push air into the patient's lungs and filter out carbon dioxide through pellets of soda lime. He saved a 12-year-old girl from death with this method for the first time. Although she was paralyzed due to polio, had a happy life for 19 more years. In 1953, mechanical ventilators started to work and saved many lives. Before Ibsen's idea, mortality rate of respiratory failure of such patients was 87%. 
However, after that, it dropped to 7%. At the beginning, ventilators were only for such polio cases. Nonetheless, soon they were used for all patients with respiratory problems. In 1957, Ibsen created a specific space at his hospital for those patients who needed more advanced monitoring and he invited many other specialists to treat the patients. So it was the first ICU, I mean intensive care unit. Gradually, the idea expanded and by the 1970s, ICUs were established in most of hospitals in high-income countries. Many thanks for your attention. If you are interested, please like it and subscribe to this channel. In this channel, I wanna summarize a recently published paper in the Lancet journals. Kindly send us your great comments. Thank you so much for your attention. See you later.